Hey there guys, Paul here from the Engineering Mindset. In this video, we are going to be taking a very detailed look at the design data for a centrifugal chiller. Now this is a pretty advanced video, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, I really recommend you go back and watch these first. We've made a number of videos explaining all the parts of a chiller and how they work, and on here, as you can see, we've got the chiller basics running you through each individual step at a very basic level so you understand how it works. I really recommend you go back and watch these first. So if we switch over to the section view showing the side of the centrifugal chiller and we'll just go around first and familiarize yourself with the chiller components. So this cylinder here is the evaporator which is this component here. Next we've got the compressor located at the top there and that's located there on the chiller Next we've got the condenser located at the bottom there and that is located there on the chiller and the final main component is the expansion valve located just there and that is located just there at the back of the chiller. Now if you've watched the other videos then you should be familiar with this chart and schematic here. We're going to be looking at all the points on these charts to see what the actual the, the pressure and the temperature the enthalpy and the entropy are around this system. So point one which is here on the chart and that is just between the evaporator and the compressor so that's going to be around there and we know that that's a low pressure low temperature saturated vapor. Point two which is just after the compressor but before the condenser that's going to be around here and we know that's a high pressure high temperature saturated vapor. The third part which is located just after the condenser but before the expansion valve so it's around here and we know that the refrigerant in that pipe is going to be a high pressure a medium temperature saturated liquid and the fourth point there that is just after the expansion valve but before the evaporator just around here and we know that the refrigerant at that point is going to be a low pressure low temperature and it's going to be a mix between a liquid and a vapor mix. Now this chart here which is the pressure enthalpy chart this is the one which is most commonly used um, when plotting the refrigerant uh, cycle for a chiller. This is what a real one would look like and there's uh, obviously a huge amount of lines and data you can pull off of these charts. We're not going to look too much at what each of these lines do in this chart we'll look at that in a separate video but we are going to look at what the data points are at all of these points and that's point one, two, three and four. Now before we look at the refrigerant uh, properties let's have a look at what's happening with the water and the refrigerant through the evaporator, condenser and the compressor. Now in the evaporator this is where the chilled water is cycled. So that's the chilled water there coming out of the chiller rising up through the risers out into the AHUs and coming back around to pick uh, to dump the heat that it's collected or the unwanted heat from the building. Now we can see here that in this example the water is flowing at around 99.5 liters per second which is around 210 cubic feet per minute and the water is coming back at around 12 degrees Celsius 53.6 Fahrenheit and after it has dumped its heat it is then leaving the evaporator of the chiller at around 6 degrees Celsius which is around 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember all the points in the video today are just an example uh, the chiller in your building or in, in any building that you may visit and may be doing some work on uh, may vary but this is some design data from an actual chiller. So if you're learning about chillers, this is going to be a great resource for you. The next part we'll look at is the condenser. Remember through this part of the chiller is where the condenser water flows. The condenser water which is here, so that picks up all the unwanted heat which was dumped by the evaporator and that sends that heat up into the cooling tower where it disperses that out to atmosphere and it drops a few degrees and then returns back to the condenser to pick up more unwanted heat. 
So in this example, the water is flowing through the condenser at 116.6 liters per second, which is around two, oh, that's a mistake. That's better. Uh, so that is around 247 cubic feet per minute. The condenser water coming in, so this is the water from the cooling tower, that's coming in at around 29 degrees Celsius, which is around 84.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And after that has picked up the heat and left to go off to the cooling towers, it's gone off at around 35 degrees Celsius, which is around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the reason that the flow rate is higher in the condenser compared to the evaporator is because the condenser has to reject more heat. It also has to take the heat away from the compressor and also from the, or just the motor and parts of the machine. So it has to distribute the heat or disperse even the heat of more equipment than just the evaporator. Finally, we've got the compressor and the statistics for that. And that, the compressor is obviously the driving force of the refrigerant around this system. And that is pushing a refrigerant with a flow rate of 16.5 kilograms per second, approximately 36.4 pounds per minute per second, uh, pounds per second. That motor is then drawing, uh, consuming 425.9 kilowatts and that is at 100 RLA, uh, and that means that the compressor is running 100% and that all the um, figures that we're gonna see in this is the chiller running at its, at its absolute maximum. So if the chiller reduced its capacity, then the figures in the refrigerant are going to change and then also the temperature um, in these evaporator and the condenser are also going to change. So we'll start at point one, which is here on the chart. And I've also marked it on the chiller and also with the figures for that point. Point one is also here on the real chart. So at this point here, the refrigerant pressure is 356 kilopascals, which is about 3.56 bars. That's gonna have a temperature of around 5.5 degrees Celsius, uh, 41.9 degrees Fahrenheit, the refrigerant enthalpy will be 402 kilojoules per kilogram, around 173 BTUs per pound. And the entropy at that point will be 1.73 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, around 0.41 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. Now as we move on to point two, which is located just here and here on the charts, then we know that the enthalpy is going to increase because it is not on a straight line with enthalpy at the bottom here that is not on the same axis so it's moved over here which means that's going to increase we also know that the entropy is going to increase as well because that is not a straight line and we also know that the temperature and pressure are going to increase as well because this has moved obviously so at point two, you can see that the pressure has increased from 356 to 915 kilopascals, 9.15 bar. The temperature has also increased from 5.5 degrees Celsius to 43.6 Celsius, 110.5 Fahrenheit. And we can also see that the enthalpy and the entropy have also increased as well. Remember the temperature of the refrigerant hitting into the condenser has to be high and it has to be a higher temperature than the water in the condenser to enable that heat transfer to occur and for the condenser to reject that heat. If they were the same temperature then no heat transfer would occur and the chiller would do no cooling. The third part which is located just down here and here on the chart and from that, we know that the pressure is going to remain the same. And we can see there that it has at 915 kilopascals. We know that the temperature is going to reduce, and it has. So it's gone from 43.6 degrees Celsius down to 36.1. And we know that there is going to be a change in enthalpy and entropy from this point here over to this point here, which represents a different point on this axis here. Same for this one. So at point three, like we said, the pressure is going to remain the same 
and it has all the other points are going to change. So at point three, the refrigerant temperature is now 36.1 degrees Celsius, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Refrigerant enthalpy is 250 kilojoules per kilogram, 107.5 BTUs per pound. And the refrigerant entropy is 1.17 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And that's at 0.28 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. The last point on here is point four, which is located just here just past the expansion valve but before the evaporator. We know that at point four there's going to be a reduction in pressure but that that will come down to uh, approximately the, the same pressure as the uh, as point one there. And that has a 356 kilopascals, 3.56 bar, the same as point one. We know that the enthalpy is going to be less at point four than it is at point one and it is. It's at 250 kilojoules per kilogram, 107.5 BTUs per pound, and at point one is 402 kilojoules per kilogram at 173 BTUs per pound. We know that the temperature is also going to remain the same, as uh, you can see here, and it has, so it's stayed at 5.5 degrees Celsius, and it's gone back to one at 5.5 degrees Celsius. And that's along that line there, which is on this axis here. And we also know that the entropy is going to be um, at a higher value compared to point 0.3, um, but it is going to be a lesser value than at point 0.1, and it is here. I did just correct that in the video, so apologies if you'd written that down just before I'd made the correction. But that has gone from around uh, 1.2 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin at around 0.29 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit, um, up back to point one where it's around 1.73 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, at around 0.41 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. As I said previously in the video, um, all of these these measurements um, around the machine for the refrigerant, they are going to vary as the capacity of the chiller varies. This is an example of a chiller running at 100% from the design data. Many of the points on here have had to be calculated and you can find this data in the refrigerant tables. There's also a, a large number of resources online, um, many of them premium and paid for, um, where you can find this data out. But I recommend if you want to find the details for the chiller you've got on your building, then you should speak to the manufacturer or your sales representative to get hold of the design data specific to your chiller. This will help you perform calculations on your chiller to see how efficient it's working and how it's operating in general, just the health of the machine. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If it's been a help, then please subscribe, like, and share the video. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Again, don't forget to visit our website, theengineeringmindset.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All right, thanks for watching.